So welcome from our side. Um, my name is Peter. You heard a lot of me about Klarheit, Mut und Menschlichkeit. Um, so to straighten that out. And um, what we're going to talk today about is, um, before we start, I, I don't know if John is already there. Um, he made my life. Um, when, I, when I was really young, I, I really enjoyed computer games. And I don't know much how. I don't know how many hours I spend with playing Doom. And um, I'm going to spend a couple of hours with the last release of him um, on the fifth episode of Doom. I don't know if who of you guys know that. Um, today, we're going to focus a little bit on two topics um, <coughs> of this event. Um, we're going to talk about, um, on the one side, about the coding society we set up at Volkswagen. And on the other side, and thanks, Niels, for joining us here, we're talking about a little bit um, controlling complexity on what we are doing, what our approach is going to look like, and how we are going to make things a little bit more efficient than we're doing them today. So let's start with the coding society and um, where we came from. Um, why, coding, why coding society is so important to us um, we didn't know in the past, but I want to tell you a little bit about where we came from. So I'm going to take you on a journey, um, what we as Volkswagen had to do to get back coding experience and, and coding capabilities to our company. Because you got to know that a lot of our stuff just was bought. We didn't do it on our own. We didn't code ourselves. Um, so we had to change something, and I'm going to talk let, uh, later a little bit about that. So first question, I'm going to do some stupid hand-raising questions. So who of you knows Volkswagen? Good. <laughs> who, um, who of you now thinks of a car? Like that one car? Well, OK. <laughs> Basically, you're right. But if I talk about Volkswagen, I talk about a, a group of brands. And this is what Volkswagen really is. It's 12 brands from commercial vehicles in the, sitting in the middle, from passenger cars to trucks and even a motorcycle company. So if we talk about bringing back a coding society to Volkswagen, we talk about an organizational complexity of 12 brands and of a lot of people. I just brought you three numbers. So for Volkswagen, they're worldwide are working over 600,000 people. We have 122 plants where we produce our cars and where manufacturing happens. And um, the third number I brought you is if we talk about IT in that coding society environment, um, then we talk about in-group IT of about 2,000 to 2,300 people. And overall in the group, if you look at the 12 brands you saw before, we talk about about eight to 9,000 people working in IT. So when you try to build up a coding society and you come from a standpoint where you outsource a lot of the activities and you outsource a lot of software, and you have, on the other hand, a lot of complexity, you can imagine it was, how can I say that? It's, it, was a, it was a very tiny path we could take on, on really working again and changing things. So who expected that with the 12 brands? And, and who was aware of what Volkswagen really is? Ooh, I didn't expect that. Damn it. Um, good. So to me, it's important that, that you know when, when, I, when I talk about where we came from, 
in Group IT, we started an initiative um, which was called Back to Tech. And we started thinking of um, what we can do. And again, where we came from, this is bare metal, right? We come from welding, we come from pressing, we come from assembling an engine and putting it in there. It's almost no software, right? So we, had a pro a, we, we are still a very product-focused company, and we have to expand that. So with all the happenings around us, um, like companies pushing on the market and offering mobility without having any hardware product, and you all know that I'm talking about Uber and, and companies who offer mobility as a digital service, then um, we totally are sure that we have to change. So our road is going to go towards a software-driven, being a software-driven car, or getting a software-driven car manufacturer and a software-driven mobility provider. And there is, a, there is a funny story I told Niels before, and, and I think it's a, it's a good point to, to tell it on stage also. Um, in, I remember very good in, in, on the CBIT in 2014, um, Martin Hoffman and me, we were talking about, or actually he was asking me, Peter, we got to do something different. And I was like, yes, we got to do something different. And he said, what are we going to do different? And I said, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so basically, that, that really was the starting point of um, making up our mind what we should do and what we can do. Because we just had a few people left who know who, how to code. We just had a few people left who, who really are in the processes and were capable of writing code. So it's a combination of everything. So it's a combination of having the organizational complexity, having our products, having a small rest of people who can still work on code. And basically, we had to start from scratch. And I'm going to show you a picture um, how we really started. And I told you we are a 600,000 human being company. And we had to bring a startup feeling back into our company because we had to discover what we can do about bringing back software uh, capabilities from a developing it on our own perspective back to our company. And this is really how we started. We started in 2016, a, digital, a so-called digital lab in Berlin. And the main difference we saw from a lab's perspective, where you just try and ev evaluate things, our first day goal was to write productive software for our customers. And i tell you a little bit later, I think we did pretty good on that. We were seeking out for a partner. Um, Pivotal supported us in 2016 because we really, even I had to learn. So I, I have a software background. Um, but there was ages in between where, where I was um, doing architecture management for Porsche, where I was doing uh, architecture management for Volkswagen. And Niels is doing architecture management for AWS. So, but there is a difference. So, if I look at Niels, he's going to be really in a tech business. If you do architecture management for a company like Volkswagen, it's more like planning, governing, looking that the standards are kept. It's not like um, getting new technologies in there. So, And we wanted to change also that. we got to go back to tech and back to capabilities of really doing things on our own. Um, what Pivotal taught us those days, or back those days in, in 2016, is structure your work and concentrate on getting better and better and better. And we started with a small team of six people. And basically, a day looks like pretty same every day when we write code. We start together a day. We start together with a stand-up. We are going to go in the teams, have our team stand-ups. We're going to start developing our code in pairs. We're going to work together for the upcoming hours. We write test-driven code. We do an extreme, an extreme programming approach. 
And as normal, if you write productive code and if you write products, you do it together with your customer and you do an iteration planning on it and you make sure that you fit your customer needs. So, and basically, we established, established that over the last two and a half years and extended it for sure. And our biggest learning was while we were doing that, at first, for sure, we concentrated on really doing and writing the code and, and getting better and better and writing more high-quality code. But the more people we became, the more important it was for us not to just look on our output, but also look on our environment we were offering to our people. Right? So it's not just about the way you build product, and it's not just of being a little bit agile. It's really about forming a culture and offering people a place to work where they love to work. And, and this is really something we are trying the following for the last two and a half years. And um, I brought you a little video which explains even better what I just was talking about, how we're going to do things a day. And this is a new office we set up last year in Lisbon. And enjoy it. Hi, Anna. Hey, bon dia. Good morning in Portuguese. Could you walk me in? Yeah, for sure. Anna, how do you feel today? Pretty good. I always wake up in a good mood to come here to work. Every day is a new day. Could you describe the lab in one word? That one is a good one. Um, maybe unique? Guys, I have work to do. Let's find out Leo and Luis. Hey. Hey. Is the coffee bell in Lisbon? Oh, yes, it is. What will you be working on today? So, today I will be pairing here with Leo. We will be implementing a new feature for the vehicle connectivity framework, which will allow a car owner to remotely lock and unlock its car. That sounds challenging. Yes, it is, but working together really makes it easier. Hey, guys, sorry, I gotta go to work, so keep it up. Well, sorry, um, who's telling you what to do? It's the team. Every day we have a stand-up and we decide as a whole what to do. By the way, have you met my colleagues, Tiago and Francisco? Hey, uh, what's hello. going on here? We're pairing. Francisco is teaching me the technique, so we take it back to the lab in Lisbon. And why are you doing it this way? Because we truly believe this is a better way to develop software while discussing different approaches and also preventing knowledge silos. And one more question, uh, where's this guy here, uh, Bruno? Uh, excuse me, why aren't you coding? Because we are having a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, feedback is essential in our culture and it allows us to continuously improve. Bruno, you were the first guy from the Portugal team joining yeah. the Berlin Lab. What was your first impression? I was completely amazed. The only thing in common with my previous jobs is that I write code. What do you guys bring back to Lisbon? Well, besides all the techniques and the practices we learn, we also want to take back this feeling of belonging, this culture, this spirit, uh, yeah, and the sharing. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, in the end of the day, it's all about the user and writing the greatest software in the coolest way possible. Any interesting? I have one. We are not only a team, we are a great team. And I want to thank you all from Digital Lab for sharing, caring, and teaching. Hey, bon dia. This is the Digital Lab Lisbon. See you folks later, we've got work to do. Follow me, I'll show you around. Hi, this is my first month back in Lisbon and I'm thrilled to, to share my Berlin expressions and what we have learned. I arrived five weeks ago and now we are building our place up and it's so exciting. And for this, even the XP methodology is really awesome. 
even for the team spirit. Yes, it was something completely new to me, but everything just makes sense and the collaboration is really awesome. And hey, you need to check out the rest of the office. Cassie! Hurry up, there's a lot more to explore. Hey folks, it's crazy how many job applications we're getting right now. Stefan, what do you reckon? 1,200 so far? Yeah, that's about it. So, we're in fact a team of 20 people by now. And uh, Lisbon is an amazing place to hire great talents and to work with people from all over the world. I'll show you the rest. Could you imagine that Volkswagen would look like this? I never expected it, to be honest. Our mission is to show people this new Volkswagen and to find more colleagues to build outstanding products with passion. Do you remember? The coffee is better in Lisbon. Man, I love this city. Great transition, Stefan. Thank you. We'd like to thank everyone who's helping us build oh, this yeah. place. So special thanks go out to the members of the City of Lisbon, our wonderful colleagues from Volkswagen Group Services, and of course to all our supporters back in the headquarter in Wolfsburg. Cheers. And remember, sky is the limit! <laughs> Um, the, the good part of that, um, representing on, on all the work we are doing, is um, it, it's really being, being proud of, of not, not getting the honor for all that was built up on myself. But the funny thing on that is, or the, the, to me the really emotional part on that is, what we are trying to do is, when we set up offices all over the world, and this is where we are today, um, growing from a team size of three to now, to now over 450 software developers writing really product productive code, is that we're trying to run our offices with their own DNA. And we bring people together to form those offices, like you saw in Lisbon. We will have a frame of where they're working. but. I think the most fun part to work together with, with those guys is um, that they build their small coding society in a bigger society. And, and that's one of our most important things, to really put all the effort into our products to satisfy our customers. And, and this, to me, really makes that, that if I see, see that after those two years, that really makes me happy. So we're constantly growing, and we for sure want to grow. Um, but the most important thing to me is, while we are growing, we always have to look on our culture. And I don't want to freeze our culture. I want to extend our culture by every single office we are opening. I want to keep up the empathy in those offices, between the people and between the offices, and for sure, and this is my personal thing, which I, which I tell everybody and, and to, to take it with himself. If you, if you do and run something like that, do it with humbleness and do it with respect. Um, I think this is one of the best engines how to get something done. And this is my biggest driver to keep those three things up in all the software development we are doing in the future. And I'm really looking forward to it. All right, so that was a little um, experience or impression on, on, on how we are forming our um, software society or coding society within the Volkswagen Group. And we just have 20 minutes left. We're totally in time. 
um, we talk a little bit now of controlling complexity. I was talking a little bit, uh, a little bit about complexity um, when we were showing the organizational part. Um, let me take you a little bit towards when you look at the manufacturing part, when you look at the hardware products, and when you look at the software we are trying to create. You always have a business, right? And, and the complexity doesn't just come from the product and the software itself. It also comes from your environment. So you have cost, quality, and time with every freaking product, project you're going to build or product you're going to build. Then you have the user. The user itself is a driver for complexity because he wants to have speed, because he wants to have functions and features, and he wants to have a great user experience. If that is not there, your product is probably, isn't probably worth anything. And then you have, for sure, technology. And you want to build on, and Niels is there, stability, scalability, and availability. I'll talk a little bit about what that means to us. And if you, compi if you combine all that, if we look at software products we are building, we always try to mitigate risks on that combination of complexity of our software products. And if we talk about reducing complexity, and, and this is a slide I was showing at the AWS reInvent in December, um, what, we were try uh, what, we, what we actually got managed with the help of AWS, because all the software we are creating um, is based on a platform which is called Volkswagen Web Services. We set that up on um, AWS. And what we realized there, or, or what, we, what, what we created there, is an entry point for our devs. That they can pull their all kind of services they need to just let their code run. So from minute one, you are productive, and you don't have to hesitate about any infrastructure as code or any physical infrastructure overall. Um, what, we are, what we were able to manage is um, that we, and all of you know who write software, um, there is more and more laws and regulations coming down the drain. If you look in the specific countries, you have to consider things like data governance and, and data protection laws. So we had to roll our platform availability, or we have to expand our platform availability to all the different regions in the world. And we are now live in six regions. There should have been a talk on the AWS as a best, uh, as a best practice in, in Shanghai. Probably we can redo do that some later on technical details of the platform. Um, but also that was besides the software learning creation itself and besides building customer software also created that we created a platform for the convenience of our developers so that they can ship their code without hesitating about any infrastructure environment. And my last word on that, by having all that my biggest learning in controlling complexity also is put it down on what's really needed. Focus on the customer. Figure out what the customer really needs. And it doesn't matter if the customer is a developer itself or it's an end customer. You write software for a specific purpose. And if it doesn't fit the purpose, throw it away. Don't waste time on doing worthless things. All right, so let's go a little bit more in what's coming next in controlling complexity. Niels is here. I'm gonna, I have a video for you. We're building up, actually, next week, there is an opening in Dresden. We are building up a software development center there. And this is going to be for digital production. And what we are doing there is we will help digitize our production environment with a digital production platform. We do things like checking if the glue on a chassis is put right on that chassis by using image recognition, ML and AI. What, but what's beneficial to Volkswagen on that is if there is a mistake, we don't have to rework on the car. We can do it directly on the assembly line. We also do in Dresden um, research together with the universities. We're researching on 5G stuff. 
And for sure, our focus will be on machine-to-machine -machine communication, where 5G as a technology is, is one of the best technologies you can imagine if you look towards latency and stuff like that. And for sure, and this is why Niels is here, we're going to build that whole thing up on AWS and Volkswagen and AWS. We announced a partnership a couple of weeks ago where we're going to build the first production platform for logistics and production as a joint approach together. And what you see here is, um, all of you know, if it comes to logistics, there are some barcodes have to be scanned. We're trying to do that with high-resolution resolu cameras. And how this is going to get done and how we're going to work on that, I would like to introduce Niels. And he's going to tell you a little bit about how AWS and we are going to work together. Thank you, Peter. So I grew up in a small town near Wolfsburg in northern Germany. And just to remind you, Wolfsburg is not only the city where Volkswagen is headquartered, it's also home to the largest manufacturing plant on the planet. So growing up, it was just natural that a lot of the people I went to school with would go on and work for Volkswagen. And my parents would have very much liked it for me to do the same. It's a good job, close to home. So I did what every self-respecting teenager needs to do at one point. Um, I rebelled and said, no, I don't want to build cars. I want to go see the world. I want to do something with computers. And mom, I really need to work on my music. You don't just understand me. So that's what I did. And while I had the privilege of working for some great technology companies, in my current role as a solutions architect at Amazon Web Services, I have the absolute privilege of working with a customer that is on the bleeding edge of a lot of things I get excited about at work, like industrial IoT or large-scale cloud infrastructures. And that customer, as you might have guessed it, um, is the Volkswagen Group. So the point I'm trying to make is, one, listen to your parents. They're often right. Uh, but two, if you're a software developer, an IT architect, a DevOps person, the automotive industry is currently one of the most exciting places to be if you work in IT. It's an industry, as Peter said, that's rapidly changing, driven by external uh, and inter internal factors. So a lot of these systems that are being built today, like the digital production platform that Volkswagen and Amazon are building together, will shape the future of mobility. So not only do you get to work with the latest and greatest in cloud computing technology, you hopefully get to work on something that will have a positive impact on our society. But if you look at these two companies, on the outside, they're seemingly very different, different from each other. But as we work together in our joint new projects, every side brings their areas of expertise to the table. Volkswagen, with their manufacturing jobs, their decades of experience in building cars and mobility solutions, and AWS with our cloud computing platform and a background in logistics. But one thing we agreed on as we embarked on a new journey together is that we're going to use the peculiar way that we um, foster at um, Amazon to drive innovation and build new services. And to give you an idea what's behind that, let me just touch on a few examples of that, how we work. One, and Peter mentioned that already, we work backwards from the customer. We work backwards from what's the expected outcome. It might sound a bit trivial, but it's a fundamental aspect of how we work together. Because people can get behind the why, the vision. It needs to be something tangible that people understand. That's what's called a vision. It's something you can see, it's something you can imagine. So the first thing that gets written, even before we start any project, even before it gets approved, is a press release, an internal press release that's written in the way as if we were to launch our new product, our new service today. And what that gives everyone is an idea of what we're working towards. Second part is you write a list or you write a document of frequently asked questions that a customer would, ha would have around this service that we're building. And again, this allows you to 
find gaps in your thinking and make sure that what we're building is actually something that is relevant to the customer and tied back to that original goal, that original vision. And sometimes we even go so far as to um, write user manuals, documentation, again, any time before um, the, the service starts getting built. So to give you an example of that, it's my favorite one, because people can get behind the why. Even if you don't have the context of this sentence, um, you know that that speech that Martin Luther King gave 56 years ago, um, what his vision, what his dream was. Like, I have a dream that one day in the Red Hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream. You don't remember him for his I have a plan speech, where he outlines the details on how to get there in minute detail, because the what is going to look different for everyone involved. But you need to have that long-term thinking. You need to know what you're working towards. As our founder and CEO, Jeff Bezos, likes to say, you have to be stubborn on the vision, but flexible on the details. The second part is, while we do use PowerPoint and Amazon, we don't use PowerPoint as part of the decision-making process. Instead, you are asked to write a long-form narrative, a one-page or six-page document that outlines in detail with um, some thinking put into it what you want to build and the decisions that you make, need to make to get there. Because if you need to sit down and articulate your plans in a long-form document, you have to be very, very thoughtful around what you're going to build, instead of just throwing a few bullet points on a PowerPoint and winging your way through a presentation and try to get buy-in from that. And finally, it's around the way how we organize ourselves. At Amazon, we have this notion, and now together with Volkswagen, this notion of a two-pizza team, meaning no team should be bigger than what can be fed with two large family-sized pizzas. And while you might probably be thinking like three people, um, it's more around eight to 10 in, on average. Because as teams grow beyond 10 people, the friction in communication just becomes detrimental to a team, team's performance. So these teams are organized around the services that they're building and running and not organized around roles, et cetera. So this allows these two pizza teams to be very autonomous, make decisions on how to build and run their services and products by themselves, and um, move forward very quickly on their own release cycles. And with that, I'm just going to hand it back to Peter. Thank you. Thank you, Niels. Well, before coming to the uh, question and answers part, um, there is a help statement. Tell us who and how we are. And um, I think we started last year with coming to the VR developers. It's my, it's re it's really my my begging to you: come back, stay what the VR developers are, and help software development stay what. Um, it made out of our company. And I'm going to show you a little bit a picture at the end of where we came from with the team of people who run those offices. And this is really, we all have a career at Volkswagen, right? And this is how they looked before, right? So, and it, it, it's really, to me, to somebody who is 20 years now in automotive, we really feel free and we can, we can, we can, we can be ourselves and we can, we can do what we learned. And it's just possible because there are people like you supporting that with their heart, with their brain, with their empathy, and with their humbleness. And um, basically, visit us at our booth, talk to us, and thank you very much. <laughs>